These are smart helmets, and they're so dumb. And today we learn what brings a helmet to market and why all of these, save one, are fraudulent. Fortnite! Meet Scully. He has a rear view camera and a heads up display. Ooh. I can also see turn by turn directions, caller ID, Iron Man got nothing on me. No wonder Scully pre stole 3,961 orders at 1,400 apiece, raising 3.2 million in a record crowdfund and 11 million in a Silly Valley Series A. With which they delivered dick all and went bankrupt. It turns out Scully had some housing costs. 6,200 a month for the CEO's apartment, cleaners for said apartment, groceries for said apartment, restaurant bills because screw eating in said apartment, then rent for another nicer apartment. This comes from Bella with Love the CEO's disgruntled assistant who filed a lawsuit detailing transportation expenses. Four motorcycles, a Dodge Viper, a second Dodge Viper after crashing the first, then limo and Lamborghini rentals because screw Dodge Vipers. This is the world's smartest motorcycle helmet and it's made right here in San Francisco. The conference tables made of engine blocks add a nice touch. And you can't miss the beer garden for Friday happy hour. This company's lean and mean despite raising nearly $14 million from major investors. Let's make a more professional definition of lean and mean, because I don't think Scully just blew the opportunity to sell helmets. I think they sold a helmet that was destined to blow. Consider Shoei's Neotech 2. It does nothing smart. But it glistens like blood, blinks like an eyelid, the padding holds your head like a lover and whispers wind noise in your ear. A standard of premium Shoei has taken 60 years to refine. And they've streamlined their manufacturing process to five minutes. They've scaled their supply chains and distribution channels to handle 676,000 items annually, globally, and Shoei still charges over $1,000 to turn that into good business. Now reconsider Scully. They sold 4,000 helmets that were supposed to be smarter and deliverable next year with no design history, no supply relationships, no manufacturing experience. I'd sooner trust them to find the Infinity Stones and snap that product into existence, but even then we're talking four 40-foot sea cans full of receiving, packaging, shipping, and aftercare work. Meanwhile, the financial forecast was to raise $50 million, while the global market for super premium helmets is only $1.9 billion. And assuming a $2 price to sales and 50% ownership retention, you need one in every 38 helmets to be a Scully before the business model even starts making sense. And it's pure comedy unless they have your money. Or mine. See, I bought all this rubbish so you don't have to, which is why we must thank American Optical for sponsoring this video. Their sunglasses can be made to order with bayonet temples for sliding straight into your helmet. Helmet ability is why American Optical was the choice of fighter pilots and fake fighter pilots since 1833. The lenses can also be made to order with Aolite nylon, which I happen to discover is impact resistant for highway debris. And these are my honest daily choice for riding shades wouldn't sell the sponsorship if they weren't. So click the link in the description and help American Optical help us. Now, NuViz proposed a more credible smart helmet by just not making the helmet part. Mostly you're buying a battery with a little Google Glass, a little camera, and a little adhesive. It's aerodynamically comparable to a grand piano. And my angle on concussions is that I'd rather land on Leon Edwards' left foot. But we owe NuViz thanks, for they finally showed us how badly we don't want a heads-up display. Imagine holding 240 grams of lithium in your teeth to power a massive light bulb for all of three hours, only to barely see anything because you're up against the sun. In the weather you ride, in the moments you should pay attention, you'll be looking askance at a dim distraction. There's a reason fighter helmets project onto the visor itself and plug into an actual supercomputer and cost the US government $400,000. So the idea of some startup building a useful HUD for a thousand Cheetos is moronic. Especially when we have dashes doing beautiful navigation, phone, music. I don't even have to hang the motorcycle battery on my head. Ooh, is there any future for smart helmets? Yes. We just need to ask what people currently suffer to hang on their heads. Bluetooth, all the time. GoPros, all the time. 
If we forego the Iron Man cosplay, we can smarten our real lives with foresight. This helmet navigates by an LED bar. Turn right, cops ahead, turn left. It feeds me user-generated road events that brighten in daylight, dim in a tunnel, and minimally distract. One must use Foresight's map app, but I checked the back end and it's powered by Here Technologies. Same as Garmin, Ford, Jaguar. The nav is proven. Then we have a camera in the chin bar which records on loop at 1080p. It isn't stabilized and it isn't pretty, but it's always there in case something exciting happens. If you've never seen a lens here, that's because it's a pain in the neck to design. And Foresight began by courting a well-utilized Vietnamese manufacturer. Kabuto, <coughs> Bell, Fox. Oh, I'm sorry. And the reason for sourcing a carbon shell is that the chin bar must be strong enough to anchor the module, which is proprietary and properly incompressible. So Foresight then had to engineer a leaf spring to compensate for the lack of flex. It works. ECE tested the spring at 100 Gs better attenuation than without, but Foresight cracked a lot of eggs to get there. Well shit, and that means I need a ceramic battery that won't explode in my face. And it better be thin, so now I need to add a charge on the go port. What a slow and uncrowdfundable process, but the result is discreetly useful. Foresight quietly enabled the first in-race POV footage since professional rules forbid externally mounted cameras. For good reason. Any chotch can stick a plastic faux hawk on the back, but it's unsafe and it films my ass. And what kind of pervert would want to see that right here all day when they have two perfectly shiny mirrors? And that's why smart helmets are stupid. And trying to be bold and new, they end up as half-baked solutions looking for a problem. The smartest helmet wouldn't try to be that smart. Foresight's camera is Sony, its Bluetooth is Qualcomm, its chip is Amberella, its speakers are Harman, and helmet-to-helmet -helmet chatting can be done rangelessly through Discord. And because Foresight didn't reinvent these wheels, they've rolled 2,000 Mark Ones out the door without going bankrupt. Even if everything does go tits up, I'll be left with a 1490 gram carbon lid, which is a lovely place to lay my head and worth half of the thousand dollars I paid. That is how you bring a smart helmet to market, and that is why so many failed. Now we're smarter buyers, seller beware.